What's the matter? Good morning. It's day three, yep. and we are back on the bus. We have just checked out of the Kibbutz Hotel, um, Nof Ginosar, and we are heading today for Mount. We're gonna we're gonna stay in Jericho, but we're gonna see a lot of other things on the way there. Right. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of hiking today, um, not a huge amount, um, to some kind of uh, special places. They think the Savior may have gone to ponder and pray which is really going to be nice um, and probably not a lot of crowds up there so that's really good um, yeah and then we'll be staying in Jericho tonight and then on to Jerusalem tomorrow so we're ready for today's adventures and we're looking forward to bringing them to you so today we started from the Nof Ginosar Kibbutz Hotel and headed for the Arbel Nature Reserve where we hiked Mount Arbel about a half hour away Mount Arbel is a steep hill in Lower Galilee near Tiberias. It sits about 594 feet above sea level and is about 1,250 feet high. There is a clearly marked gravel walking path up to the top. We were among the first groups to get there, so had the path and the top to ourselves for quite a while. The path is dirt and gravel, but it's not difficult. I did use a walking stick for some added stability, but it's not a huge issue if you don't have one. It wasn't a difficult hike, even for me. Um, this is an Israeli National Park. And I think you said there was some 300 or so national yes. parks in the country. Mm -hmm. This is so great. The views from the top are spectacular and well worth the 20 or so minute walk up. It was sunny but windy and cold the day we were there, so be sure to bring a sweatshirt or jacket when you come. We are standing on the top of Mount Arbel, which because of its proximity to Capernaum and other places that Jesus lived and ministered in, they think it may have been at least one of the mountains where he would come apart to pray. And here's something really interesting. This overlooks the Sea of Galilee. It's interesting to think that if he was up here while they were rowing and the storm came up, and he didn't come to them until the fourth watch, which was between 3 and 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. So he let them struggle out there for a while, but he was always watching them. He could have seen them from up here. And I think that's just an incredible metaphor. He's always watching. From Mount Darbel, we headed south toward Nazareth, the boyhood home of Jesus. Our destination in Nazareth was Nazareth Village. Nazareth Village is a first century farm and archaeologically accurate recreation of the hometown of Jesus. It houses an ancient wine press, terrace farming, irrigation systems, stone quarry, and first century tomb, and they have authentic replicas of an olive press, houses, a synagogue, and a watchtower. You remember that Nazareth is the city where Jesus, Mary, and Joseph came after leaving Egypt. Remember they went to Egypt because Herod was killing all of the children two years of age and under. No doubt, this is where Joseph taught Jesus the trade we call carpentry. Joseph and Jesus would likely have built homes as well as many other things. They also cultivate and harvest olives, grapes, and other vegetables, and raise sheep. Mama, eat. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Oh, yeah. Can I pat you? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is sweet. Right? Yeah. It was our olive press of eight. The words for an olive press in ancient Hebrew are that shemanim. Gat 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 Shemanim.
legislature. In fact, Goff literally is press. Shimanim is oil. Press of oil. The system, though, of every press, there's always two stages. There's the crushing stage, and then there's the squeezing stage. We pick the olives off the trees October and November. We put them into the stone basin right here. We tie a donkey to the beam, and e <laughs> The stone is extremely heavy, okay? It crushes the olives in the basin. You hear a crackling sound of the pits of the olives being crushed. We crush the whole olive. Then they have specially formed baskets like these, okay? These are specially made for this task, uh, an, an ancient design, okay? And the, the olive paste or crushed olives are stuffed into the sides of the rims of these specially formed baskets, uh, and they're packed full of crushed olives. Then we stack the baskets one on top of each other into a pile, and then we bring the, the stacks of baskets to the presses, which are on this side of the building. And actually, the baskets are covering a hole that's been cut into the floor. The hole is there to catch the oil and the water that'll come dripping out of the baskets when we squeeze them. You put the baskets on the end, and then you squeeze the baskets with the big uh, wood beam. Then you can add more weight with the big stone weights that are in the pit. They're about half uh, a ton each. As you add more pressure, the quality drops. So the first press oil is the best oil, virgin <coughs> olive oil. Uh, we believe that this would be considered a kind of first fruits and therefore considered sacred and sent to the temple in Jerusalem. For example, the menorah, the seven branch candelabra in the temple that's always lit, is lit with the best of olive oil. The second oil is for food and cooking, medicine, perfume, and cosmetics. The third oil is the lowest quality oil. That's okay. It's still good enough to light oil lamps like these and also to make soap. Our guide led us through the property showing us how they grew crops, even in hilly areas, then took us to where people in historical dress were showing building and carpentry techniques and spinning and weaving techniques from 2,000 years ago. And on the back we also have what is essentially a hammer. Then uh, we have two black volcanic stones, basalt. The rough one is used for sanding and the smooth one is used for sharpening we have the plane of course which shaves off the top of the wood and we have one more tool we want to show you what do you think this strange tool might be. No, it's not a bow and arrow. Ah, very good. You've seen one of these before, obviously. Okay. This is called a bow drill. Oh, cool. Now, we have a specific word in the New Testament uh, that describes the work of Joseph and Jesus in the Greek, uh, which is the original text of the Testament is in Greek, and that's the word tekton. Tecton, we believe, is possible to translate not only worker with wood, but also worker with stone. So we believe that their skilled, la of course, skilled labor and hard work involved also cutting, shaping, and building the stone. So quite possibly including the work of building houses. All right? Let's thank Joseph. Thank you very much, Joseph. Thank you. Here, I want to introduce you to a very special lady. This is Hannah, our weaver. Hello. Welcome, welcome. First, we take the sheep and we shear them with. Oh, we shear them with the shears, okay, to get their wool. Then we wash the wool with water to clean it. Then we card the wool. Carding means to open the wool because it's all clumpy and it needs to be opened before it can be spun. This can also be done by hand. And then, like this. Yeah, there you go. And then we're ready to spin. You ready to show us spinning? Yes. Okay, perfect. So she adds a piece of wool that she's prepared or carded to the end of what she was making before. And with the spindle, she keeps going. She makes it look really easy to do because she has 2,000 years of experience. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Don't hurt me. You hold your age well. It looks good, but it can't be used because it tangles because of the, the spinning. So it has to be put into these kinds of balls and let sit for at least a few weeks, ideally, so 
when we put it on the loom, it doesn't tangle too bad. Then we have two rows, one to the front and one to the back of the loom, and the shuttle is used to pass between the rows. She'll use her finger to pull the strings from the back side of the loom past the front row, and then the shuttle in between. Then she's got a, a wooden cone to tighten up the new row up against the last row, and this is how rows are added one by one until we hit the finished product. Now, the colors, the natural colors of the sheep are white and brown. But to obtain other colors, we use all kinds of things that we find around us, like the skins of onions for yellow, different green growing plants like fig leaves, lavender leaves, etc. for green, uh, the shells of nuts for light grays and browns, uh, the skins of pomegranates for different types of oranges and a few other colors because there's actually different types of pomegranates. Much more expensive, the spice saffron for a golden color. But the most expensive were blue and purple because what they used to make that was, yeah, sea snails. You had to find them alive, thousands and thousands of them. It's very complicated and work intensive. This is why blue and purple became known as the colors for kings and emperors because only they were rich enough that they could afford to buy clothes made exclusively with these colors. So let's give a hand to Hannah, our mighty woman of valor. Thank you, thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, Hannah. Come to visit again. Thank you. It was a very fun stop and one we would recommend. I will put links in the description if you'd like more information. The contemporary city of Nazareth itself is a little challenging, so it might be best to go with a group. The next stop was Mount Tabor, or the Mount of Transfiguration. While we don't know for certain this event took place here, it is the traditional site, and the summit affords another amazing view. Mount Tabor is about 18 kilometers, or 11 miles, from the Sea of Galilee. You can read the account of what happened with Jesus, Peter, James, and John in the New Testament in Mark 9, verses 2 through 10. We arrived in Jericho and were scheduled to check into the Oasis Hotel there, but before checking in, we stopped at Jimmy's Bazaar, famous for their olive wood nativities and oh so much more. We went to Israel with the intention to buy a nativity there, and we found this one. I loved how simple it is. We left Jimmy's and rode the short way to the hotel, had dinner, and went right to bed. We were to stay there just one night and then head to Jerusalem in the morning, but not before making several major stops along the way. And we will bring you all that and more next time. That ended day four. Um, it was a, it was really fun. It was a, it was a really it was good, good day. day yeah. It was a really good day. Mount Arbel was really nice. That yeah. was, uh, it was nice and peaceful there. Mm -hmm. That's one cold. of the things we really like. It was cold. <laughs> really yes. windy and cold. And then the Nazareth village I thought was very fascinating. There were so many aspects of it. They, they talked about the, the olive trees. They, they had a example of a tomb. They had Buildings there was and, a an olive press press. and an olive press. Yeah, and, and that that was really it was sort of like a historic village. I, I apologize for that. It's just it's what she does. That's what she does. Um, yeah, it was. But we it was didn't realize how good it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it was a historic recreation of a Nazareth village at the time of the Savior. At the time of the Savior, and um, <laughs> at the time of sorry, um, <laughs> our cat has some cat walking issues. problems apparently. <laughs> I guess so. Anyway. Yeah, the, it was it was very well done. It was very well done, and um, I, you know I like the weaving and spinning demonstration, and yeah. you know, and it was also Joseph the carpenter, although or more more likely an engineer. Yeah. He did not only did probably carpentry, he may have also done stonework as exactly. well. Exactly, it's, and it's that, hard to tell from the the guide explained as the Greek word is tekton, <clears throat> and uh, so which means more builder. And you know, engineer it can mean a little bit more than just regular labor. It was more skilled labor, yeah. and so which is very cool to know. And then uh, the drive through Jericho was interesting, and then to see this multi-billion-dollar hotel in the middle of this kind of abject poverty. To be really honest, it's it was a little sad. Really third world type, very third situation. world in this Palestinian area, which is Jericho. Um, and then there's Jimmy's. You know, it's just Jimmy's Bazaar, 
which has been only in Jerusalem, and apparently he's opened a store in Jericho, and that's where we went. None of us <laughs> took pictures because we're all too busy giving him money, so <laughs> there was that. Anyway, and then the next day, we went on to additional adventures on our way to Jerusalem. So that's going to end this particular episode of our Israel trip, and we hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified. You bet, and we love your comments, so... Um, be sure to leave them for us. So until next time, restless friends, you take care. Bye.